Hello, my dear friends. I hope you have enjoyed our Young Artists Alumni series. Please feel free to share our virtual performance series with your families and friends around the world. Today, I'm here to introduce some of my very talented musician friends and our upcoming virtuoso series. The renowned saxophone player Steve Marsh will be starting off our virtuoso series. Steve has performed with many well-known artists such as Tony Bennett, Sammy Davis Jr., Johnny Matisse, and Paul Anka, as well as several movie soundtracks. In addition to numerous American tours, Steve has performed in Japan, Finland, Switzerland, Germany, the United Kingdom, and Mexico. Steve will be accompanied on the piano by his lovely wife, Saiko Fuji. Together, they will perform for us music by French composer Per Maurice, Russian composer Modest Mussorgsky, and much more. Our second virtuoso series will feature Ventura's very own pianist, Miriam Arichea. Miriam debuted at the inaugural Chico concert in 2004 and has been an important part of Chico since, both as a piano soloist and as a board member. Miriam will bring to life a beautiful performance of a multi-ethnic program, including works by Beethoven, to celebrate the composer's 250th birthday this December. Other piano music by Brazilian composer Via Lobos, American composer Aaron Copeland, and Anglo-African composer Coleridge Taylor. This event will be live streamed on November 27th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please reserve your free ticket by visiting cichamberorchestra.org. This December, we are also streaming operatic love right into your home. We are sending you the passionate love of La Troviata, the heartbreaking love of La Boheme, the timeless tragic love of Madame Butterfly, and much more. Joining us are two brilliant young singers, Joseph Lopez and Julia Metzler. They will interpret the most enduring romantic arias just for you. Both JJ and Julia are Los Angeles-based professional singers. They are roster members of the Los Angeles Master Chorale and can frequently be heard performing at the Walt Disney Council Hall and the Hollywood Ball. That concludes my introduction, my friends. Please visit cichamberorchestra.org for more details. And also allow me to wish you and yours a peaceful and happy holiday season ahead. Stay well, stay tuned. Hello and welcome. My name is Steve Marsh. I'm on the music faculty at California State University Channel Islands campus. I sometimes also perform with the Channel Islands Chamber Orchestra on second clarinet, bass clarinet, or sometimes on the saxophones. And today it's the saxophones I'm gonna be discussing with you and demonstrating, performing for you. And I am surrounded right here by the big baritone saxophone, the tenor saxophone over here, the alto saxophone, and a very cute little curved soprano saxophone. So we'll be performing these for you. And later on, with the help of my lovely and talented wife, Saiko Fuji on piano, we will demonstrate some French classical saxophone music for you as well. And I will also demonstrate some jazz saxophone styles. So let's start by giving you some background about these saxophone instruments, the history of them, where they came from. The saxophone is one of the most recently invented woodwind instruments. The other orchestral woodwinds, such as the oboe, clarinet, flute, bassoon, had been around for a long time before the saxophone finally arrived. That's one of several reasons why the saxophone is not included in today's symphony orchestras. There's other reasons as well that we'll talk about later. The saxophone is considered to be a woodwind instrument, which is kind of funny because the entire body and mechanism is made out of brass metal. But 
it is still classified as a woodwind because of the reed, the cane reed. And it is a single reed instrument like the clarinet. And actually the first prototypes of the saxophone mouthpieces were also made out of wood. So the saxophone is still referred to as being in the woodwind family. The saxophone's inventor was a very genius craftsman by the name of Adolf Sax from the country of Belgium. And he envisioned right away a large family of different sized instruments, similar in sound, but in different pitch ranges that would all be able to be functional with the realm of different bands and orchestras. So the four sizes that I have today are the most common ones. The alto, tenor, baritone, and soprano are the most common ones. Before we talk too much, I'd like to demonstrate the sound of the soprano saxophone. Now, these days, a lot of soprano saxophones are manufactured in a straight shape, like a clarinet, more or less. They also can be in this curved design as well. I prefer this one. It's got a little bit darker sound. It's easier to hang on a neck strap. To demonstrate this curved soprano saxophone, I'd like to play an old tune called Do You Know What It Means to Miss New Orleans? It was debuted in a 1947 movie called New Orleans, which featured this song being performed by Louis Armstrong and Billie Holiday. And the co-writers were Eddie DeLang and Louis Alter. to Miss New Orleans. So that was one of the high saxophones, the soprano. Now let's go to the opposite end, the low end of the saxophone spectrum, and we will demonstrate this baritone saxophone. And to do that, I'm going to have to reset the camera a little bit further away so you can see the whole thing. It's very large. Now the baritone saxophone has been played by famous jazz musicians like Jerry Mulligan, and it's been played by cartoon characters like Lisa Simpson. Same instrument. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief demonstration, a little riff from the very famous Tower of Power band that had a five-piece horn section anchored by a baritone saxophone. And this is a little variation on their tune, Squib Cakes, Squib Cakes. And the baritone saxophone does take more air for the performer to blow than the little soprano saxophone. That's true. And there's several other models of the saxophone family that are somewhat rare, and we'll see them in this image here. On the far left side of this image, we see the sopranino saxophone, which is smaller than a regular soprano saxophone. It's like the piccolo of the saxophone family. And in the center of this image, we see a picture of a baritone saxophone. You've seen how large my baritone saxophone is. So just imagine how huge and enormous this bass saxophone is. And then this very rare giant contrabass saxophone over here. The inventor Adolf Sax envisioned this entire range of saxophones from the beginning. 
that he would have a whole family of similar instruments. So the history of the saxophone began in the mind of this amazing musical inventor named Adolf Sax from Belgium. Mr. Sax had invented several other musical instruments and had perfected things like the bass clarinet before he invented the saxophone. And this was all done in the years of his later teenage years and early 20s. Let's take a look at Mr. Adolf Sax in this photo here. And even today, the country of Belgium is still very proud of their famous citizen who invented these marvelous saxophone instruments. Until 2002, when Belgium switched their currency to the euro, the 200 Belgian franc note featured the image of Adolf Sax on the front. And on the reverse side of the bill, we see images of saxophones like this. So Adolf Sachs was born in the year 1814, son of Charles Joseph Sachs, who was also a musical inventor and had quite a lot of prestige in that industry in Belgium. And as a child, it's an interesting story, Adolf Sachs was quite accident prone. At age two, he fell down a flight of stairs, hit his head very hard, was in a coma for a week after that. And that was just the first of many accidents. In his father's shop, they did metallurgy and composed brass of different elements. There were a lot of chemicals in the shop all the time. And several times, young Adolf managed to drink some very poisonous liquids that were in the shop. And he almost died a few times from that. Another time, a pot of gunpowder exploded in his father's shop. And Adolf was quite badly burned and was thrown across the room by the force of the explosion. When Adolf Sex was 10 years old, he fell into a river and was face down and was drowning when a villager came along and pulled him out of the river. A lot of pretty dangerous accidents happened to him when he was young, but perhaps this prepared Adolf Sex for his adulthood, which was also very dangerous and prone to very threatening situations. In his adult life, Adolf Sax would have to contend with countless thefts, litigations, and even multiple assassination attempts from rival musical instrument manufacturers in Paris. It's an amazing story. So young Adolf Sax learned the instrument making trade from his father, and by age 15, Adolf had fabricated two flutes out of ivory and a clarinet also out of ivory and won a big prize at a Belgian trade show. His skills were recognized pretty early on. Before Adolf was 20 years old, he had redesigned the bass clarinet, which had previously been a clunky, undependable, out-of-tune instrument. And Adolf Sachs, before the age of 20, made the bass clarinet usable for orchestras and bands. Adolf Sachs was himself very highly skilled on both flutes and clarinets. When his new bass clarinet design was challenged by other members of the orchestra, Adolf Sachs did what he always did in his life. He challenged that protagonist to a musical duel, a cutting contest of sorts. And from the accounts of that occasion and other musical challenges, the reports are that Adolf Sachs always destroyed the competition with his superior musical skills and his virtuosity and technique. There was nobody who could keep up with him. And that would be true when he invented these saxophones later. By the age of 27, Adolf Sachs had invented a new low register instrument that combined a clarinet type single reed mouthpiece with an existing instrument called an ophoclide which you don't see much of anymore. But those were kind of a serpent-shaped brass instrument, and that was the forerunner of the saxophone. After several redesigns of the instrument, it started to look more like the similar shapes of the saxophones that we see today. And around the same time, Adolf Sax was producing a wide range of brass instruments that might look to you somewhat like trumpets or flugelhorns, uh, even had a sax tuba. He liked to attach his name to all of his inventions, so those were called sax horns or sax tuba. Not all of his inventions stuck with us. If we look at this image, you'll see a six-valve, seven-bell trombone that Adolf Sax designed. So he was very creative, had quite the imagination, but not all of these instruments have lasted. At the age of 30, Adolf Sax moved from Belgium to Paris, France, and that was, at the time, the center of the European musical instrument manufacturing industry. In 1846, Sax received his patent for the first saxophone prototypes. They still didn't look quite like our today's saxophones, but he was getting there, and the instrument was still in a state of evolution as he kept redesigning it. Almost immediately, the Parisian instrument manufacturers were very threatened by Adolf Sax and his new instruments, and they sought all means to disrupt his business uh, to ruin him financially, to steal his instrument designs. It was really pretty bad. Uh, his factory was vandalized. His designs were stolen. Frivolous lawsuits from all corners came at him, which ultimately led to bankruptcy for Mr. Sachs. And 
They even tried to kill him a couple different times. And in one amazing and horrifying incident, a bearded gentleman who looked somewhat like Mr. Sachs was stabbed to death by these enemies of his who thought it was Adolf Sachs. Even in spite of all these adversities, Adolf Sachs was able to convince the French military bands to adopt his instruments. There were even instances of military people in France riding horses in their military outfits, holding the saxophones off to the side as they trotted down the field on their horses. At this time, my wife Saiko Fuji on piano and myself on alto saxophone would like to perform for you the Tableau de Provence, which is very popular suite for saxophone. We're going to do the first three movements out of the five for time's sake. This piece was composed by French composer Palais Maurice. Palais Maurice was married to another composer who was Pierre Lantier, who wrote some very magnificent music for saxophone himself. Together, the couple wrote and published a treatise on modern harmony for the post Debussy, Ravel, and Stravinsky period of music. Madame Paule Maurice studied at the Paris Conservatory and then spent her professional life at that institution as professor of sight singing and professor of harmonic analysis. Her Tableau de Provence was originally composed for alto saxophone soloist and orchestra, but these days it is most often performed with the piano reduction version of the score. So now please enjoy our performance of the first three short movements of Tableau de Provence.
We hope you enjoyed that. That's really fun to play. And we've got one more performance for you later on in this presentation. So the saxophone came along a little too late to join the ranks of the established orchestration of the symphony orchestra. A lot of the early saxophone players were not so skilled either. They tended to play out of tune and have weird sounds that didn't blend with the string section and the classical woodwind section. But even despite that, a few French composers decided to compose music for the saxophone. Later in this presentation, I'll perform one of those famous excerpts, which of course is the Old Castle segment from Pictures and an Exhibition. Maurice Ravel's orchestration decided to include an alto saxophone solo with the orchestra. Ravel also included saxophones in his famous Bolero composition. And the composer Hector Berlioz was very much of a fan of sax and his instruments. And composers such as Bizet, Rachmaninoff, Vaughn Williams, Benjamin Britten, and John Adams have all included the saxophone in some of their orchestrations and compositions. Composers such as Jacques Ibert, Hector Villalobos, and Alexander Glazunov have composed very successful concertos for solo saxophone with orchestra. Also over the years, a large amount of chamber music and sonatas have been written for saxophone. So now it's time to lead you into another performance by yours truly and pianist Psycho Fuji. This time we're going to take on a classic by Modest Muskorgsky, a section of pictures at an exhibition. Several musicians have orchestrated this piece, which was originally for piano only. Leopold Stokowski had a go at it. His version did not include a saxophone solo, but Maurice Ravel very generously included an alto saxophone solo on the movement that's called The Old Castle. And here we will perform a reduced version of it for piano and saxophone only. Please enjoy.
We hope you enjoyed those performances. The saxophone was also popular during the vaudeville era, but it wasn't seen as a really serious instrument a lot of times. It was given a comical role because the saxophone can make funny sound effects. And from 1910 to 1930, a performer named Rudy Weedoff was immensely popular on saxophone. And he had a lot of very good technical ability, could play very fast and doing all kinds of incredible effects. And Rudy Weedoff specialized on the C melody saxophone and on the alto saxophone. Ultimately, of course, the saxophone family found its real home in the jazz music of the United States. At first, the saxophone wasn't taken too seriously, but a tenor saxophonist named Coleman Hawkins came along and really showed that the saxophone could be a serious improvising instrument and could have a very serious technical approach to it. You know, the saxophone is a very flexible instrument. The instrument takes on the physical characteristics and you can really manipulate the sound and, and flex the sound quite a bit to make an individual style. And in jazz, that's very preferred to come up with your own sound and your own style. And the five-piece saxophone section became established in the jazz big bands. Generally, two alto saxophones, two tenor saxophones, and a baritone saxophone makes up your standard saxophone section. And finally, I'd like to leave you with a video of the Modulate Saxophone Quartet. And we're going to perform a classic by ragtime music composer Scott Joplin. This one's called The Cascades. Features my longtime friends Jeff Delasante on the baritone saxophone, Scott Cheever on tenor saxophone, David Crozier on soprano saxophone, and myself on alto saxophone. Please enjoy The Cascades. Mm -hmm. 